Jehovah is the most important word to a Jehovah's Witness. Jehovah's Witnesses believe their religion is the only religion that might bring you closer to God. And the first thing you need to get close to Him is His name. So the name Jehovah is practically the first thing they teach to a potential new convert and even to their kids. Jehovah is probably the first three-syllable word that a toddler raised by a Jehovah's Witness will learn, since they believe that name is key to their salvation. There's only one issue with that. Jehovah is a false name. This is the name that God gets in the Bible. Concretely, this is the name that God gets in the Old Testament because it doesn't show up in the New Testament. And you may notice that it seems hard to pronounce due to its lack of vowels. The ancient Hebrew alphabet only used consonants, leaving the original pronunciation of the sacred name a mystery. The vowels for the name were likely passed down orally and added to the written text using diacritical marks called vowel points. However, since the name was considered so sacred, those vowels were never written and rarely pronounced only by a select few. However, Jewish people still wanted to call God something, even if they needed to avoid the original name out of respect. Hence, Jewish tradition developed a system of substituting the name Yahweh with the Hebrew word Adonai, which means Lord. That way, Jewish people could refer to God as the Lord without having to pronounce the holy name in a non-sacred context. That's why many Bibles even today substitute the Tetragrammaton for the title Lord to follow that ancient tradition. The name was pronounced so sparingly that the original pronunciation ended up getting lost in time, leaving us only with the consonants. However, not all is lost. Most Bible scholars today agree that the original pronunciation of the Tetragrammaton was something like Yahweh. Nobody had even pronounced the name Jehovah until the Middle Ages. There, we find a Latin translation of the Hebrew Bible, which was produced by Christian scholars. So, they see the ancient tradition of combining the name J-H-W-H with the word Adonai and think, oh, score, we can just make this into God's name in our Bible translation and start using this hybrid name as the name of God because they weren't even aware of the practice of substituting the name. Using this understanding, they created a new name for God by combining the consonants of J-H-W-H with the vowels of the Latin word for Lord. This resulted in the name Jehovah, which was included in the Latin translation of the Bible. Fast forward to the 16th century when the name Jehovah gained even more popularity as Protestant theologians began to emphasize the importance of reading the Bible in the original languages. Many of these scholars saw this made-up name as a way to connect with the original Hebrew text of the Old Testament and to distinguish their movement from the Roman Catholic Church. It's important to remember, though, that this name was only added in the Old Testament. Remember, everybody agreed that the New Testament didn't feature the Tetragrammaton, so it didn't have this issue. There, he was always called Lord or something similar. One of these translations calling God this made-up name in the Old Testament is the King James Version which was one of the most popular versions in the 19th and 20th centuries. And this is the translation that Pastor Charles Taze Russell, founder of the Jehovah's Witnesses, happened to use. However, he didn't put that much emphasis on God's name. If you read his writings, you see he often called God the Lord, and the religion itself started as the Bible students, not the Jehovah's Witnesses. It wasn't until Judge Rutherford replaced Russell after his death that the religion started to double down on using that name, renaming the religion in 1931 to Jehovah's Witnesses. Thirty years later, the Jehovah's Witnesses published their own translation of the Bible, and since they had already gotten used to adding Jehovah, and since no one in the translation committee had any qualifications to actually translate the Bible, they used the name Jehovah to replace the Tetragrammaton. But they didn't just add Jehovah in the Old Testament. They also added it over 200 times in the New Testament with a very weird and convoluted reasoning that they pretend is some sort of divine intervention. Many scholars who agree with us that the divine name should appear in the Hebrew scriptures disagree with our use of the same name in the New Testament. So what prompted the translators of the New World Translation to restore the divine name 237 times in the Christian Greek scriptures? The answer to that question involves some fascinating events that seem to be too amazing to be just coincidence. By that time, some scholars discovered manuscripts that contained the Tetragrammaton. 
so they pretend that this gave them permission to add the made-up name Jehovah into their translation. What an amazing find! They found proof that the divine name in Hebrew letters was included in the text of the Septuagint that would have been available in Jesus' day. And just at the right time, the time when the members of the translation committee were making the decision as to whether they should use the name Jehovah in their translation of the Christian Greek scriptures. Isn't it interesting that these discoveries were made around the time that our brothers were translating the New World Translation? Is this just coincidence? Or do you see Jehovah's hand in this? Jeff here explains how, since there were some manuscripts found with the Tetragrammaton, they interpreted that as a sign to add the made-up name Jehovah to their translation. Then, he uses the fact that sometimes Jesus and the other New Testament characters quoted from the Old Testament as an excuse to add the name Jehovah into the New Testament. Because if the name Jehovah was used in the Old Testament, then they must have been using it in the New Testament when they were quoting from it too. This is extremely convoluted. And it gets even more convoluted when you realize that they basically have to come up with a conspiracy for this to happen. They believe that in the 3rd century, a wave of evil opposers altered the Bible, deleting the name Jehovah from it and leaving no trace of it ever. Which is why most scholars don't actually think this happened. We have solid evidence that a crime was committed in the 2nd and 3rd century CE. Apostate Christians removed the divine name from manuscripts of the Bible and replaced it with Kyrios, the Greek word for Lord. There is much evidence for this conclusion. Notice how Jeff calls them apostates, because apostate means pretty much anyone who disagrees with the governing body, even if the religion didn't exist for them to apostatize from. This whole house of cards is needed solely for them to pretend like them adding the name Jehovah to the Bible is a good thing, instead of a deliberate mistranslation, because if evil people altered the Bible in the 3rd century leaving no evidence behind, then they are restoring the holy name into the Bible. Our brothers, this translation, New World Translation Committee, did their research before even translating. Suddenly something that was unknown until essentially 1944 came to light that confirms that the eternal name of God has to be revealed. It cannot no longer be hidden. It, it should be shown to everyone who wants to worship Jehovah. And this is a flood not just because that conspiracy of removing the holy name as late as the 3rd century didn't happen, the name had been long gone by then. It's flawed because it flies in the face of what the Jehovah's Witnesses consider to be another one of their core doctrines, the infallibility of the Bible. Writers of the Christian Greek scriptures quoted the Hebrew scriptures, but often from the Greek Septuagint translation. At times they paraphrased such quotations using slightly different wording but the message remained the same. And most of Jesus' words, likely spoken in first century Hebrew, were recorded in Greek. Still, his message is clear. Jehovah's Witnesses believe that you can trust the Bible because it hasn't been altered. It has stayed the same for millennia, proving that God was taking care of it. The Bible is a book of facts. It's about real people, real events, real history in real places. But if this is true, then Jehovah failed at keeping the absolute most important thing in the Bible, his own name. Either we can all trust the Bible because it hasn't been altered and therefore it doesn't need any additions, or apostates remove the most important part of the Bible, proving God either is incapable to protect it or he just doesn't care enough about that name to begin with, and proving also that the Bible is definitely subject to human-made change. Apostate Christians removed the divine name from manuscripts of the Bible. This careful preservation supports what Jesus said in prayer. It makes no sense. Insisting that Jehovah is the right name for God when it's so clearly not, not only makes the Bible seem less reliable as a whole, it makes all the other Bibles foreign and weird to Jehovah's Witnesses. And here is where we find the most nonsensical cope that the Jehovah's Witness religion will tell you. If you press them on it, they will admit that Jehovah isn't the most accurate way of calling the Abrahamic God. But 
They'll tell you that no one can know for sure how people called him back then and that the most important thing is that you develop a relationship with him, aka allow yourself to get indoctrinated. Now, sure, we may not be 100% totally sure beyond any convincing that Yahweh was the most accurate pronunciation for the Tetragrammaton, even if we have a lot of evidence to suggest it. But we do know that Jehovah is definitely not the way they pronounced it back then, because it's a linguistic impossibility, and because we know that that name was only invented in the Middle Ages. And saying that the most important thing is that you develop a relationship with him isn't just coping, it's a lie. You cannot call God any other name but Jehovah. In fact, a lot of Jehovah's Witnesses will look at you weird if you call God Lord, or even worse, Father, on a regular basis, despite the fact that that's how Jesus called God when talking about him to other people. That's because, by now, the name Jehovah has become so important that it's a vital part of their doctrine. Jehovah's Witnesses will consider learning the name Jehovah as the very first step into indoctrination. Knowing God's personal name, Jehovah, is closely tied in with glorifying His reputation. In fact, knowing Jehovah's name is the very first step in that process. But in reality, Jehovah's Witnesses only believe that God is called Jehovah because Russell happened to use the most popular translation at the time, and because Rutherford, who had zero training in religion, doctrine, or anything else that mattered, saw that name and decided to build a religion around it. At the end of the day, to me, there is no better proof that the Jehovah's Witnesses are a false religion than them preaching a false name for God. Think of the amount of money that if it fell out of your pocket, you wouldn't miss. That's the perfect amount to support me on Patreon and help me keep making at least one video per week. Get access to videos early, polls, and more by supporting me with any amount on Patreon.